Welcome, everybody, to Hemp 101. This is another episode that we're bringing to you with Rabbi Yako. Uh, Rabbi, how's it going today? Doing great. Am I spiffy enough? Yeah. <laughs> Am I spiffy? Yeah. Am I, do I look sharp enough? Am I yeah. good? <laughs> so, uh, we got you on the show to talk about the process that you're using in cannabis and the hemp space to make sure that everything uh, is kosher uh, to the people that are requesting it. Uh, whether it's uh, the people of the, the Jewish faith or just all across the board. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Because uh, so a lot of people think that kosher just means like blessed by the rabbi. Like the rabbi comes in and he weighs his hands or something. And it has nothing to do with that. There are very detailed laws that is handed down, written in the five books of Moses, the Bible, which basically covers all kinds of various different foods in a spectrum ranging from meat to dairy, fish, birds, bugs, and grapes. So basically all of those have certain laws that have to be followed in order to ascertain or certify if a food item is kosher to ingest. That's the basic definition. Okay. And so... When did you start to see a large uh, request for this in the cannabis space? Um, it started with my son. I had a son who was diagnosed having a brain tumor about six and a half years ago. And he went through the entire protocol, the usual standard. He had surgery done. He went through radiation, went through chemo. We were working on rehabilitating him, and he had a relapse of the cancer. That basically, the doctors said there was little that they could do, just more chemo. We were not into that because he didn't do well with that. And we heard about cannabis and the unbelievable effects of cannabis. And we knew that there were studies coming out of Israel and other places that it had a lot of powerful effects on cancer, not just appetite, which is what. I heard from before. And so we flew to California, got a license, a medical license for him. And we managed to find two wonderful women who took us in and were getting us all manner forms of spectrum of the medicine, what I call the medicine plant. You know, whether it was the raw bud to juice and CBD. THC, oils, you name it. We were trying to implement a protocol which we were clueless about at the time. But he was doing great, giving we were just kind of like bombarding his system with cannabis and he was doing wonderful. We couldn't stay in Texas. And so we had, I mean, we couldn't stay in California. We had to come back. And the people there agreed to send us the medicine via the mail. And what happened was it got stopped at the post office. It ended up being a big bust. Their farm uh, was shut down. We didn't get the medicine. And my son had his downfall, his demise. And so his health went down and he passed away. And as a result of that, seeing since we were kind of a famous case because we were actually on a uh, what we call, um, sir, uh, what do you call it when people sign up? A petition. We had a petition of 100,000 signatures to get the FDA to approve this other experimental medicine. And so it became like really a video went viral about Alicia, Alicia Cohen. That was his name, Alicia Mayor Cohen. And a video went viral. People knew about it in New York, all over. And they signed the petition. And so he was a famous case. And since then, in his demise, we were confronted by a lot of people who were asking us questions about cannabis because there were a lot of people who were very sick. And a lot of people had a lot of different ailments. And I says, hey, you know, there are studies. Why don't you try this? And then, of course, a lot of people approach me and going, well, what are the terms of the kosher? How does that work? Is it, do I need it? Do I not need it? And there are many laws in terms of if you, if it's really, if it's a life-threatening illness, you don't necessarily need it to be kosher. But then there are other areas of ailments in the spectrum where you don't need it. 
uh, where not that you don't need it. It's better if you do have it kosher. People definitely feel better about it. Just going back on what you said before, Lance, that uh, kosher is not just for the Jewish people. It's also Muslims who are careful with halal laws. It's also vegetarians, vegans, health conscientious people. Let's say, like, I, I think over 60% of what you see in the supermarket has a kosher symbol on it because it's just one of those things that it's a third party audit. Another pair of eyes inspected it. So it guarantees a healthier, safe product. Especially since last um, last year when there was the whole vape, the vape pen thing, the vape pen uh -huh. scare. Right? Yep. So people were then calling me even more like, you know, what is in these vape pens? Because we do give kosher certification to vape pens. Uh, medically, you know, and so they were, you know, so of course, I think it got solved. Did it get solved? Did it get resolved now? How is it? What's the, uh, I, you know, I'm really not sure. I, me personally, I'm not a big fan of the vapes. That's, that's just me personally. Um, because there's no long-term studies, you're smoking an oil, turning it into a vapor into your lungs. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, it's, okay. it, it was kind of something that really kind of snapped into the market real quick after, uh, you know, with, with cannabis legalization and everything like that with the concentrates and, and then the vapes and everything like that. So people trying to get off of smoking, like the typical smoking of a, you know, organic material and then going, well, I mean, it's still organic, but going into the oil, et cetera. So it's, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the vapes, but uh, I, I don't think it's been resolved. I think it's still kind of people are walking on eggshells with that, just kind of, you yeah. know, trying to see. But there's a huge market for it, you know. The yeah, and they were, and and so I was, I was confronted by a lot of people going, you know, which vape pens to get, because now I'm, you know, people are contacting me from all over, and so the idea was, since my son ha passed away, and I've been doing kosher certification for years, I do for all kinds of food products, you know, strawberries, coffee, salsa, enchilada sauce, you name it. So then a lot of people were confronting me about edibles and they wanted it medicinally for them. I'm talking about people with arthritis. You're talking to people with lupus, people who just can't sleep, all kinds of aches and pains. And of course, people feel better about it if it's kosher. So therefore, I approached a lot of uh, places in the market and I believe, and there was definitely an interest for it. Uh, the first, I think, biggest one was Charlotte's Web that we do. They were very interested in having their tinctures kosher certified. And, and of course, they're, you know, booming like everybody, like a lot of other places. And then we approached on many other places. And, yes, it's, a, it's an absolute request because this is an item that, like I say, across the board, people are looking to get it kosher certified. So I make myself available for those to, to help people to access this medicine in a way that they feel better about. That's great to hear. That's great. You know, and I'm glad you explained how broad the uh, kosher certification goes to. And it, it's not just because I'm sure a lot of people just think that when they hear kosher, they think Judaism. You know, and I'm glad that you could educate us on, you know, it's not just it's, you know, uh, with Muslims and all across the board. So with that being said, once somebody earns a kosher certification, is it a continuous process or is it just once one and done? It's not a one and done because we have to make, depending upon the what's being made, we have to make various inspections throughout the year. As a matter of fact, it's kind of like a strange situation because some of these places, they're very secure, right? The manufacturers are under a lot of high security. And we have to make unannounced inspections. After we make the initial inspection, we have to make anywhere between four to six unannounced inspections a year. So that means all of a sudden, the rabbi's here. And basically, <laughs> yeah, right, here comes the rabbi, okay? And, on, and But they're okay. Everybody's cool with it. It, and uh, and and we just like a health inspector, right? Or any of the other people who you know they it has to be unannounced, and and we basically just review the ingredients. So there's a lot of different, as you know, and probably more being made all the time. 
there's different things being made with cannabis, right? Anything from, like we just talked about the oil, the vape oil, and then there's the capsules, right? Then there's the tablets, and then there is, uh, of course, any edible from A to Z, gummies, chocolates. So any of those edibles from A to Z all have ingredients in them. So basically what we do is we will review the ingredients to make sure they are all coming from a kosher source. Like, for example, you know, the biggest uh, issue that we do have is with the gummies. Like a lot of places, they insist on having, you know, uh, gelatin. Now, gelatin comes from either melted cow bones or it comes from melted, you know, pig bones, right? And therefore, since it comes from that source, a cow, even though a cow is kosher, if it wasn't slaughtered according to Jewish law, according to Jewish ritual, then the cow is, co is not kosher. And any derivative of that cow is also not kosher. So if you take the bones and you don't handle it in the right way, right, in terms of the heat, a lot of things, a lot of details, a lot of laws go into the process. But if they're not melted down in the right way that they completely have lost their original form, it's still considered not kosher. So gelatin is an issue, but a lot of places they switched to going uh, vegan or vegetarian and they use plant-based gel, right? Agar agar or, or whatever. And then, or we did find a source actually that does have a kosher gelatin that does come from cow bones. And there are places that did switch to it and they're in the process of switching and then they get kosher certified. So speaking, whenever, uh, let's see, the larger corporations, sometimes people, I guess the, the mindset is they don't have the, uh, the best interest of the consumer in mind. So let's say in 20 years, cannabis goes corporate across the board, large corporations, mass produced, regulated industry, kind of like beer, you know, Coors, uh, Budweiser, et cetera. Um, do you think that that's something or do you think that the kosher uh, certification is something that the larger corporations will want to have? Well, if you look at Kellogg's, Kellogg's, do you think it's big? You think Kellogg's is big? Yeah. It's kosher. It really? It has a symbol on the box. Really? Yes, it does. Okay. 60 to 80 partly percent of the food items that you'll buy off the shelf in any supermarket are kosher, including bread, for sure bagels, Okay. I haven't found a not kosher bagel, okay? <laughs> but let's say, let's say hummus. Hummus, it's kind of like an in-between. It hasn't gone major corporate. <laughs> you can't find the hummus. It's hard to find a hummus that's not kosher, okay? Okay, it's a Mediterranean food. Okay. <laughs> say, you know, Kellogg's is a big one, you know? If you think of, uh, do you know what McKinley's tobacco sauce is? The Tabasco? Pretty famous. Yeah. Right? It's kosher. kosher. Really? Coca-Cola. Kosher certified. Coca-Cola. Okay. Interesting. All of the major companies. You know? What? I guess that was just my own ignorance. I, I no, wasn't, no. I mean, wasn't uh, really I, aware I should of take it, you, so. when we meet, I'll take you on a tour in a <laughs> grocery store, and I'll pick them all out for you. Now, there are probably close to 2,000 kosher symbols these days. Okay. And is that just from different? And you got to know how to recognize them. And a lot of people, they're very, they're very easy to recognize because a lot of them say, like mine, says kosher on the bottom, right? Some of them don't. Some of them are very obscure, okay? But there are symbols on there that represent that this place has been inspected. All the ingredients are kosher. And the second part thing that go, goes into kosher, which we didn't talk about, is um, the equipment, right? We have to make sure that the equipment was not contaminated by a non-kosher substance, okay? Such as, let's say, a beef oil. Like most people think, oh, MCT oil, which is most of the tinctures, of the cannabis tinctures mm -hmm. have. So people think, well, it's a coconut oil. What could be the problem? The problem is if it's made in a manufacturer that manufactures beef oil, which a lot of oils are. And let's say on Monday, it was made with a non-kosher beef oil. 
And on Tuesday, you want to make your coconut oil through the same machinery. Well, the machinery was contaminated on Monday with the beef oil. So therefore, your MCT oil has also been contaminated with a non-kosher substance. So therefore, basically, you have to review even the ingredients that seem to be, it's coconuts. What's the problem? <laughs> you have to go through a review and an inspection and, and detail to make sure it all comes from kosher sources. And the equipment, like I say, the equipment also have to verify to make sure most of the manufacturers are buying used. And if they buy used, so then we probably, usually what we do go in is we will have to purge it uh, with using boiling water. In other words, we make the equipment kosher. We can do that. It's done. We do that all the time. So, so basically the two elements. So you mentioned that you have a, a kosher symbol and there's other kosher symbols out there. Um, is there any different practice that you do differently than anybody else, or is it all the same across the board? I, I can't say for a lot because I don't know them all, okay? okay. Um, but I belong, uh, I'm a member of what's called ACCO, which is an association of kashrut organization. Go ACCOkosher.org. And basically, it's like the top 100 companies worldwide, and we adhere to the highest standards. There are the highest of the highest standards. And there are some places that don't do such high standards. So we are like on top with the top uh, companies, kosher companies, which basically we, we do a very thorough inspection and we make sure that we do those unannounced inspections because if they knew the rabbis coming, what's gonna happen, Lance? <laughs> if you know the rabbis coming, you're gonna hide the pig oil, right? Yeah. <laughs> You got to be there so they don't have time to hide. Right? Okay. So, so, uh, so I belong to that kind of group with, which adheres to the highest standards of kosher certification. So what's your schedule like? What's a typical schedule for a rabbi? <laughs> Lazy. Okay. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, we have to be on top of reviewing. Uh -huh. and, you know, so my schedule daily, you know. If I'm not busy talking to doing uh, podcasts, you know, I also teach. I give online classes. Okay. Mostly mysticism and Kabbalah. That's a forty. I teach for Torch in the city of Houston, and I give classes. Um, you can go Facebook. I think it's Y uh, R Cohen R dot Cohen, and um, and I give classes online. But aside from that, the basic schedule is. I have to make sure that the inspections are done. I travel. I am well sought out. I go everywhere, Mexico, Florida, Canada, California, Massachusetts. So I go flying around. And when I'm not flying around, so I have other people going to these places to make their inspections. And I have to review their data sheets. In other words, what happens if they come back and going, Rabbi, they switched an item. Right? <laughs> item on the list is not you know what's with this you know so basically i'm answering questions basically on the phone the rest of the time if i'm not traveling so when how long have you been working with charlotte's web maybe about four or five years i'm not sure i think I, when i went to the cannabis convention in las vegas i show up there i'm like the rabbi on the floor right oh they don't know me right so, uh, so I met them there, some, one of the representatives, and they were they wanted it right away. Really? And so, yeah, yeah, you know, they go all over the world, I believe, Charles. Yeah, they do. They're a pretty big brand out there. They also do Bloom Farms, Casmira, Zelios. You know, we're uh, we're branching out. We're in California. I do some edibles there. I do um, I do fruit slabs, Utopia. Infused Creations and uh, Vertosa. Actually, that's a more like a, um, a that's more like an ingredient that they mix for Tinley. Tinley drinks. We do Tinley drinks as well. Okay. You heard of Tinley? Next time you go to Charlotte's Web facility, give me a call. I'll, I'll bring a camera. We'll do a vlog. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. That'd be a good. That'd be a good thing to do. I didn't know that you're in Colorado. No, no. I'll I'll travel though. I'd like to get those guys on the podcast. Okay. They okay. were kind of the guys who really got the hemp movement started, you know, with the low totally. THC. That's what we heard when, when we heard about Charlotte's Web. 
and you know how she was helped with this cannabis that's when she recently passed away so for our son yeah and she and she recently passed away as well charlotte i heard yeah wow it's a shocker yeah. it's a it's shocker. very unfortunate it's very Did she passed away of corona i'm not i don't know i i'm not okay. uh, yeah i didn't uh really follow up on that i just with all of your travels what's the most exotic place you visited for the cannabis mendocino county <laughs> <laughs> uh that's actually where we did end up, um, which was there. I was driving through the hills. I did some flower tops because we also do flower tops. People, they want it. It's just a sellable item. Mm-hmm. They know that there's a, there's a kosher symbol, and it's medicinal. And so then people, it's just a, something that sells. Actually, kosher certification is responsible for, let's say, a, a, at least a 15% increase in sales for the year. Wow. Which is big. That's when you huge. <laughs> yeah. Right? So um, so that was one place. And I'm thinking about Adelanto was not exotic. Okay. <laughs> California, that's like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it is. Go to Hawaii. I haven't been invited to Hawaii yet. Okay. Um, another place. Exotic. I'm thinking about exotic. Gosh. Anywhere outside of the country? Not yet for cannabis. I was invited to go to Switzerland, but uh, we're still waiting on that one. Italy, we're still waiting on that one. A lot of places are, let's say, on the burner. <laughs> you know, certain things have to be in place before I come out and do the inspection. You have to make sure we inspect. We have to check all of the raw materials and ingredients first before I go out. Otherwise, you go there and you're going, okay, this is not going to work, right? <laughs> hey, at least you get a chance to go there, though. Yes. <laughs> and Ireland, I'm supposed to be talking to Ireland later this week. So. I, Ireland's got a pretty good cannabis and hemp market over there as well. I had no idea. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I guess I'm going to find out, okay? <laughs> so with all of your travels that you have done, where is one place that you want to go? Ooh. That's really – where's the place that I want to go? Yeah, not necessarily for cannabis, but where where nece- I guess where your travel or your your certifications might take you. Uh, Ireland was was really nice. Italy is great too, but let's say where I really want to go, Hawaii. I already mentioned. <laughs> okay. There you go. I've been there yet? I don't know what their industry is like. Are they producing? Uh, it's I you, you know that's a good question. I know that they have medical. I don't know if it's recreational. But I, I know that there, it's a lot of um, a lot of quote unquote nationalism going on over there. A lot of Hawaiian local Hawaiians want to get into it. They don't want outside investment. They want to keep it Hawaiian, as with mostly everything uh, in Hawaii. They want to keep it mostly Hawaiian. I had a, uh, my granddad was originally from uh, he was from Hawaii. He lived out there. Uh, I have an aunt that lives out there. So I used to live out there for four years. It's great. Love it. You'll love it. <laughs> I know. I know. So. That's probably the most exotic places that I'm willing, you know, some places that invite me than places where I don't want to go. I'm not interested in Indonesia, okay? And definitely I'm not interested in China. And I do get contacted from them, you know? Really? Yes. Huh, why not China? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'll give you one yeah. reason. <laughs> So I'm in a room, locked in a house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know. <laughs> so with That's all of exotic the, enough. with all of the um, the calls and the you know the asking for the kosher certification in cannabis and hemp, which one have you seen more recently? Is it cannabis? Most recent cannabis? is in North Carolina. Okay. I was like, I literally, I went to North Carolina to do open book extractions, uh, and they, and, and I'm, I'm telling you, I was on the plane, you know, and I was on the plane. Everybody's worried about Corona and things like that and the virus, you know, you would think it like it was March 15th or something. No, it wasn't March 15th. It was like, uh, maybe like mid February. I don't know. When did they do the close down? When it was they- uh, March, March, April. I was literally, I was on a plane and i landed off the plane and all of a sudden the country went pandemic and <laughs> things shut down right and i had to cancel all my other appointments 
that I was supposed to go on the subsequent weeks, like in Louisville, Kentucky and, and Michigan, you know, so I had to cancel all of those, but it was literally while I was over the plane and landed, that's when it shut down, you know? So that was the last place I, I visited. So with, I, across the country, the cannabis companies have been deemed necessity. Um, I'm sure that's keeping you pretty busy in the coming weeks. Actually, yes. I'm like LinkedIn messaging all the time back and forth with a lot of people, emails back and forth. People are picking it up, but a lot of places are still building out. The industry, I don't think it's, you know, it's, it's an argument and maybe you're more, your hands are on the pulse more than me. You know, some people think it plateaued, but I don't think so. People are saying, no, it's just starting to roll out more. Mm -hmm. Do you think? I, I think it's still in kind of the infancy stages. I mean, a lot of the commercial space, the dispensaries and the manufacturers are, are getting ramped up because they're the ones that wanted to get into it. But we're really kind of touching, barely, not even touching the tip of the iceberg because it's not even legal across the entire country. Correct. I mean, CBD is. Yes. Okay. So CBD is like, where, does, where are we on the CBD area? Have we plateaued or it's just like infant stages? It's, I, my, me personally, post or pre farm bill was at, if you, on a graph, it, the ticker was down here. Right. Post farm bill, we're probably a little bit, you know, in the one and one range. I think we're still on the uptick because not a lot of, I mean, major league sports have just, um, you know, allowed a lot of people to use it. The MMA is starting to allow their fighters to use it. So uh, I think Olympic athletes are allowed to use it now. So after all of these announcements in the last six to eight months, year alone, like we're not even seeing the tip of the iceberg right now. You know, just the, once the FDA approves it, it's gonna it's gonna be a, a heyday. So you're talking about the FDA approving THC, CBD, CBD, the hemp and the CBD. Oh wait a minute! I thought the FDA and the Farm Act already approved it. That's not true. What is the well, one, once Farmers. once it actually they go they come through with all of their requirements and then mass produce and it, because it was just recently approved last year. So now that all the rollout and the rules and the states, the states are applying to the FDA for their rules. So then it's, and that's why I think it's so young because the states are doing it kind of like cannabis, but once it gets national, once it gets to the point where Fed has to come and step in, then it's going to, I mean, the large companies, you know, uh, uh, pharma is going to come in, uh, you know, Kellogg's, Coca-Cola, all the large corporations are going to come in and start putting it, I, I think, in everything. It's going to be a nutrient in your cornflakes. I, you know, it, it, you can't hurt. You, it, why not? <laughs> why not? People were used to be consuming it before it became totally illegal. It right? would kind of be like sugar free and not. It's you, you want it or you don't. They might offer it. They might not. I don't know. That's just, I'm optimistic. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just on my side, you know, you know, we're putting, we're putting the message out there and we're getting requests for it. But, you know, thank God we're not totally onslaught with it, okay? <laughs> right? Thank God I got a staff of people helping me, but and we're not flooded. So we're okay with that, but we are busy. We are busy, but we just don't know if it's plateauing. But it seems like, yes, my one, one of my guys says, no, it's just started and just getting bigger. Yeah, because more countries across the globe are starting to be, uh, to come onto it, you know, with the legal, their the passage of their hemp laws and their cannabis laws, because I don't know why they're separate. You know, it, it's it's interesting to see how cannabis came to the, the scene first and then hemp after, you know, because of the low THC and then people are like, oh, they you know, change I, the name. They have to change the name. Once they call it hemp, it's much more. The reason why I'm giving kosher certification, which we talked about, is because of the stigma. Mm hmm. You know, is because a lot of people, when you mention cannabis, they get all, you know, oh, right? You know that. And I know that personally because I get approached with a lot of people with a lot of ailments. And I think I told you one story where there was one couple, they had a baby who was having like, I don't know, 300 seizures a day, something like that. It was ginormous. It was crazy. My wife says, you got to take some CBD. You got to take some cannabis. And they were like, no. No, because it was a stigma. They refused to take it, and the baby suffered damage. God, you know, it's terrible to hear it. Couple getting divorced, broke up the family, just and they because of the stigma. 
Wow. Really, what I'm involved in is to remove the stigma. Why giving kosher certification to these things? Yes, besides helping people who have ailments medicinally, but you also have to remove the stigma. And speaking of that, you make a good point because the cannabis and hemp will only get bigger because Western medicine hasn't adopted it yet as a form of remedy, uh, an actual medicine that they can. And do you think they're going to the farm of big farmers waiting to take it over from everybody? I think so. I mean, they've you've already seen GW Pharmaceuticals with the uh, what was it? Sativex, I think is what it's called. Uh, anyways, they, they legalized that or they made that legal for the CBD. It's an actual CBD uh, prescription that um, people can get from their doctor, uh, which is amazing that that one drug was was made legal. Um, but once once there's more research and there's more studies that come out, you know, besides the anecdotal stuff um, that doctors can actually prescribe it, then you'll start seeing commercials on, on the Super Bowl, you know, have you had a bad day? You know, do you have anxiety, trouble sleeping? Here's your medicine from the doctor, and it's going to be cannabis. You know, it's going to be different strains or whatever. Oh, it's going to be one of those commercials. Be no side effects, you know, because yeah, you, well, you, you got to have the side effects at the end. <laughs> Heart attack, stroke. If you have, you know, the ones that they give in those medical commercials, right? Yeah, and, they, and they're starting to get more drastic as the, as the days go on. Like, I was listening to the radio the other day, and now there's a class action lawsuit or whatever the heck they call it for people that have cancer from zantac a heartburn medication whoa yeah you know it was it was um uh what was the first one <sighs> the the weed sprayer roundup so roundup yeah i heard about that one product. I heard about that. how is zantac normal things that people took for heartburn it's like when will people get the hint that this plant is not the devil right and exactly. i'm glad that you're That's leading the way in that it's uh, not the uh, devil your, your fellow brethren are helping out we're with trying all. We're working on, on our front, give it a kosher symbol, and you just got it another step out there, right? So, yes, a very, very unbelievable thing to overcome that stigma, and a lot of people are still suffering from it. And since you've been doing this for so long, and with the course of what cannabis is, and the, I guess the course of what the typical mainstream mindset is with the stigma, have you seen less as the years have gone on? Yes. Oh, I'm approached, you know, in the beginning after my son's death, it was a few people. Now it's like, come on, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting flooded with like emails and phone calls and requests going like, what do you recommend this for? And then of course, people with cancer, Hashem should, God should help us, uh, you know, also come to me because for, you know, A to Z, either it's relief or, you know, actual something, which is a therapeutic. They come in with advice and they don't know who to turn to. So, and, you know, thank God nowadays there's more of a protocol that you can take for the different ailments because in my, in Alicia's day, my son's day, you know, there was no protocol, right? We were kind of, we were shooting in the dark, really. He was the experiment. Okay. So, but nowadays, you know, and they come to me for advice and how to take it microdosing or whatever it is. You know, and uh, and I could give advice on that. It's much more now than ever, because people are suffering from all of the side effects of all of their other medication. Mm -hmm. Right. What's interesting to me, though, is like a person can grow this in their backyard if it's legal, isn't it? Is yep. it? Yep. Right. So the pharma pharma's kind of might be threatened. I'm thinking with it, but of course, probably not. They'll just tweak it and make it into something more accessible. You're exactly right, because it's it's really easy for them to approach the states and just say, hey, change your home grow laws, and then it's taken out of our hands, and then it goes back to the black market, and then the people growing going back to the black, the quote-unquote black market, um, because there's not a lot of states that allow home grow, and there's not a lot of states that actually sell the plant in the dispensary, because there's certain dispensaries here in Oregon that you can actually walk into the dispensary, and they have a small uh, greenhouse, if you will. So they have clones uh, a couple inches high that I've you can those. home and grow yourself. And then right. there's banks all across the country. So, uh, so you mean you can buy a plant? plant? You can go and buy a plant? Yes, you can go and buy the plant. It's a and small I thought that was just display. Yep. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can walk in and walk out with a plant. Oh, oh that's amazing. So it's, I think that pharma is, uh, I think it could go two ways. They could either come in and take off with it, or they could just leave it alone and let it be. But I think they're waiting for it to get to the point where 
it's so financially hard and the regulations are against the cannabis industry to where they can shape it how they want. Almost like no. there's, it's almost like a bottleneck. Do you think that also the tobacco and alcohol companies are also going to like lunge into this business and buy up everybody? I don't know if they're going to buy everybody. I think that they'll start small to get market share. Um, they'll buy a large company or buy shares of a large company. I think that, you know, them as investors, that's why the publicly traded hemp companies and cannabis companies are doing so well. I mean, obviously, I, I don't know that for sure to be fact, but the only, I mean, these guys are, are really the publicly traded companies that are the cannabis and hemp market or the companies. It's like, they're selling a product that that's it. You know, it's just like Coca-Cola. They're not really diverse and everything like that, but I, that's a really good question. You know, I think that, you know, the mom and pops, the small, uh, the small companies that are doing well will not sell, you know, it's something that they want to pass on a generation to generation. But like you said, it, we're still in the infancy stages of this. So these companies really don't know what's going to happen because California has changed their regulations a couple of times. You know, there's different states that have changed their regulations over the course of time um, here and there, whether it's packaging this or, you know, consumption here or there. It's starting to become a lot more lax. Like when you walk downtown L.A., like there's people smoking, you know, crossing the crosswalk. And so it just it depends on where you are. But I think that Big Pharma is just going to want to make sure that their pocketbook isn't squeezed, squeezed whenever it comes to the, the medical side. <laughs> There's got to be a pushback for this, man. I'm, I'm really against the pharmaceuticals dominating the field. You mm -hmm. know? Not, just not for my personal reasons. I, think I, was, you know, I just uh, people, people need a fair playing field. Yes, they do. And I, we're the only country in the world, I think, that allows pharmaceutical commercials. Oh, really? Yeah. Why don't other countries allow pharmaceutical commercials? I don't think that their pharmaceutical medical industry is as impacted by their pharmaceuticals as ours is. Okay, because, got it. Because because of how they're regulated, I think I think pharmaceuticals are under the FDA and the, instead of the CDC, which got it. is kind of like vaccines and everything like that. So it's it's a matter of how it's regulated, who's the oversight and everything like that, that they can do what they can. And so you know, the fact that cannabis is on billboards now in magazines in major publications across the country, their impact, what, you know, whether they've got a, a tax liability of 50%, 20%, whatever, they're still getting their name out there because they're fighting the good fight. I hear, I hear radio commercials all the time. Here in <laughs> you know, in they're, Texas they're, is just really, uh, they just recently started coming onto the hemp scene to, which is great. That's my home state. I'm originally from Texas. So it's good to see the Texans, you know, starting to take off because it's a huge state. It's a huge market. A lot of land. A lot of land. A friend of mine who's just started to grow them, you know, he got himself seeds in San Antonio and he's uh, starting to, you know, produce out there. Are you going to certify him kosher? He, he for sure. Got <laughs> how to do it. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Rabbi, um, I appreciate your time and everything coming on to the show. Uh, we'd love to have you on, you know, as your journey continues again. Um, and maybe, you know, if you have, uh, since you have so many people coming to you for questions, uh, advice, et cetera, um, maybe that's something that we can talk about in the future to get a show or a side, um, you know, a, a side kind of podcast, if you will, recommendations for this or something like that. So that way you sure. can get that to your, your masses so they don't have to come to you one-on-one. -on -one. That'd be nice. Love to do that. All right. A really special one. Well, Rabbi, thank you again for coming on the show uh, and, you're, right. and you know, sharing, us, uh, sharing with us your, your journey and your story. And uh, keep up the good work out there. Pleasure. Pleasure. All right. Thank you so much, Lance. No problem. All right. All, right. All the best.